All right, so let's set up MongoDB so we can save a new user in our database. So first you need to sign up for MongoDB Atlas, which is completely free. And if it's the first time you're signing up and you don't have any clusters, at first they're gonna ask you a bunch of questions and then you would be prompted to create a new cluster. So since I've already created my free cluster, I can't create another one. But if this is your first cluster, you should be able to see a free option on this screen and then you can give it a name and create your cluster. Now, after you created your cluster, you should see an overview window like this and you would be able to connect. But before doing that, on your left navigation bar, first make sure under database access, you do have a user and you want to have the username and password for this user so you can access your databases. If you don't have anything here, or if you already have and you don't know the password, you can delete it and then add a new database user. You can choose password here and then give it the username and the password and then save that somewhere for your own. Then the next step is to go to network access and add an IP address so you can access your database. Now, since we are working on a local development server, we can choose allow access from anywhere that will add the IP address with all these zeros. And just to be safe, you can set this as a temporary ID and for example, expire it after a day or six hours or so. And now I can access my database from anywhere using my username and password. So if we go back to our clusters under database, you should be able to see a connect button right here. And if you have set up your user and your IP addresses, you should be able to see a window like this. Then you can select drivers. And since we are using a node application, you want to choose node here. And the version is going to be the latest one. So the first step for us to use MongoDB is to install the package. So back to the terminal, I can say npm i or install MongoDB. Then we have a code example here that shows how we can connect to our database. So right here, I have the view full code sample turned on, but if I turn it off, it will only give me my connection string. So let's copy this. And in our project, let's create a .env.local and paste that a string here. Now we want to wrap this with double quotations and also set this to a variable. So I will call this db underscore URI and in here you should have your username and in place of this db password you should have your password. So I will add my password and then we can continue. All right so I added my password and in the lib folder let's create a new document. I would call it db.js. Now in here, we want to connect to our database, but first let's check if there is no URI in our ENV file, then we don't want to try anything. So we can create a condition and negate it and say process.env.db underscore URI. So this should be the name of your variable, whatever you called your DB connection. And if this is false, which means we don't have that URI, we want to throw a new error and just have a message. So I just want to say Mongo URI not found. But if we do have a URI, then we want to create our client first. So let's say client, and we will set this to a new Mongo client, which needs to be imported from MongoDB. So VS Code is using a require code, and I can convert this to an import statement like that. And this Mongo client is looking for a URI string. So we can pass our DB URI again, and we can pass options here as a second argument. Now, this is optional. We don't have to do this. All we need is this URI, but I'm going to add just a few options here, which is already included in this code in MongoDB documentation. So if you are using these options, make sure you import server API version from MongoDB. Now we want to connect to our database and I want to make this code reusable. So I'm going to create an async function here and call it get db. And as a parameter, I will accept a db name. Now inside this function, let's have a try catch block. And in the try block, we want to await for the client and see if it can connect or not. If it does connect, let's log something to the console. So I will have a text like this connected to db. And if the connection is successful, we want to return the database that we want to use. So we will use client.db and this will take the database name, which we can grab it from the parameter. 
Now, if there is an error, we want to catch that and we just log that into the console. Now, after this function that is just connecting to a certain database, we want to create another function that would give us the collection. And that collection is basically a table and that's just the MongoDB way. They call the tables collections and they call each row a document. So since I want to use this function in other places in my application, I can export this. And this is going to be again an async function. Let's say export async function. And I will call this get collection. As a parameter, we will accept a collection name. And in here, we want to create a DB parameter. That would be our database, which would be returned by this function up here. So we can call that function get DB and pass the name of our database as a string to this function. So this could be any name you want to use for your application. So I will call this next blog DB. And if this exists, it's going to return it. But if it doesn't, it's going to create one and then return that DB or database. Now, after that, I'm just going to have a simple check and say, if this exists, then return a certain collection from that database. So we can use the collection function on this DB or database. And the collection we want to return is this parameter. So for example, I want to return the users. I would just pass users as a string to this function. And this will give me the users table or collection. And also, since this is just a one line return, I can get rid of these curly brackets and have this if statement in one line. Now, if this DB returns null for any reason, then we would return null from this function. Now let's use this in our register function that is being called on the server. So this is where we want to call our database. Now, before this console.log, we want to create a new variable and I will call this user collection since we are going to work with users. And I will set this to await and get collection, which is the function we just created in our db.js. So this one. And this function is looking for a collection name and I would call this users. So again, if we have a users table or a collection in our next blog db, then it would return it. Otherwise, it would create one for us. Let's just see what does this one give us. So I'm going to log that into the console. So if we go back to our website and add some information so we don't get any errors and press register, you notice we had a waiting time because we were trying to connect to the database. And if we go back to the terminal, you notice we have all this information in our terminal. But if we go back far enough, we should be able to see this message it says connected to DB. So the connection was successful and the rest is just coming from that user's collection. So we know we can successfully connect to our database. And now we just want to save the information from our form into our database. So we still have a bit of validation we need to do, but let's say everything is correct and we just want to save this into our database. First, I'm going to extract email and password from validated fields dot data. So remember this validated field, which is coming from Zod would give us a data object if the validations success. And within that data object, we would have email, password and password confirmation. And all we need is the email and the password. Now, in order to save this in our database, we can create a new variable. I would call this result. Then we can await for user collection, then use the insert one function, which is part of MongoDB. And this is looking for an object which represents a document. So we want email and password. And then let's log that results into the console. Of course, we need to hash the password and we need to check if the user exists already. But again, let's say this is the correct information. Let's go back to our website, give it a reload and actually register a new user. So of course, if we add wrong information, this is not going to work and nothing will happen until we have the correct information. So I have email and a password that matches all the criteria. And if we press register, we wait for a few seconds and we didn't get any errors. If we go back to the console, you notice we get connected to DB. We also get an object that says acknowledge set to true and the inserted ID which was this one. So it was successfully added to our database. And if we go back to MongoDB under clusters, we can 
browse the collections right here you notice we have our next blog db and then a user's collection within it and if we take a look at the users we have email and password which is saved as plain the text and we will fix that in a moment so everything is working properly let's delete this and save a proper user object in our database let's go back to our register server action so i added some comments to make it clear the steps we need to take in our register function in auth.js under server actions first we validate the form fields then we check if that validations passed or not if they do pass we will extract the form fields that we need from the validated fields data object then we need to check if the email is already registered in our database this is where we are now first we need to get the proper collection from our database and we are already doing that now this is assuming the database connection was successful let's say we were not able to connect to database so this will return null and we can check if user collection returned null then we would return an error instead of breaking our application so let's return an object and within that we would have an errors key and then within that we will have another object with the key email and for example we just want to say server error now the reason i'm adding these objects is that to match this pattern so when we get this error it would be under the email field and we don't have to create another error message for it and again this is just one line of return so i can get rid of these curly brackets and keep everything in one line so if the user collection is null then we will see an error but if it is not then we want to see if this email is already in our database so i will create a variable call it existing user then we want to await for user collection and see if we can find one in that user collection the query that we want to use is email so we want to as an object to this find one which is part of mongodb say our criteria is email this is the same as saying email is for example john at email.com since the key and the value have the same name we don't have to repeat ourselves so if this finds a user with this email from our form that means the user is already registered so again we want to say if the existing user was true then we would return another error let's just copy this whole thing and paste it here and for the message i would say email already exists in our database so i'm just going to add the curly brackets here just to keep things a bit cleaner all right so if the user exists then we would return an error and we would show it under the email input field but if that doesn't exist that means it's a new user so we want to register it into our database but first we need to hash the password so i'm going to move this up and we will come back to it in a moment after we hash the password we will save this into our database and then we need to create a session which we will cover in the future videos and then we need to redirect to the dashboard or another page let's talk about hashing the password this is quite easy we can use bcrypt package to hash our password so let's go back to the terminal and install bcrypt using npm i bcrypt so when that is done we can go back to the project and then create a new variable this one i would call it hashed password we would set this to await bcrypt and we need to import this so let's just do that first on the top of the document i can say import bcrypt from the bcrypt package like this and go back to where we were and we want to use the hash method on the bcrypt which takes the plain text and in this case is the password and then the salt or the round so to keep this simple i would just pass 10 as the round and this number represents how complicated the hashed password should be so the conventional number is 10 and that's why i'm passing here so this will hash the password and we are saving it into this variable when we save the new user into our database we don't want to use this password that is a plain text instead we want to use this one so we can say password colon hashed password so this is going to be our new entry into the database and after that we would create a session and cookies which we will cover in the next video and lastly we would redirect to the dashboard page for example now to redirect it's very easy again next.js covers navigation for us 
all we have to do is to import redirect from next slash navigation. So I'm going to press enter here and VS Code will import this for me from next slash navigation. And this is a function which would take the path we want to navigate to. So this is looking for a string and I can say dashboard, as simple as that. So back to the website, let's see if everything works properly. So of course we will get error messages if we don't include anything, but let's actually register. So I'm going to register with this information, press register. We have to wait a few seconds. We are redirected back to the dashboard. And if we take a look at our MongoDB and let's refresh this up here, there we go. We have a new object with the email and password that is hashed. And when we get to login, we will see how we can use the same bcrypt package to compare this hashed password with the plain password. So that's about it. We took a big step here and set up our database. We created our client using MongoDB client. And first we try to get the database we want to use using this function. And from that database, we get the collection. So in this case, we want to use the user's collection to register a new user. Later on, when we have other collections, then this method would be very handy. We just have to change the name here. So we are almost done with register. The only thing that is left is creating this session. Let's do that next.